Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, November 18th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Gina Barti. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, now that the temperatures are dipping in our area, anyone in need of a place to warm up or a shelter to sleep in should know that there are resources available to help. CTV's Janine Samuels has more. It's starting to feel a lot like winter already. This cold weather can be extremely dangerous for anyone that lacks a warm place to stay. If you are in need or know someone who is, there is a resource available for Prince George's County residents. Community Crisis Services runs Warm Nights, Prince George's hypothermia program. Overnight shelter is provided to individuals who need to escape cold temperatures from mid-November to March. We operate the hypothermia shelter warm nights, which provides up to 50 additional beds during the year for those who are homeless, uh, with the sole goal of really keeping people from freezing to death. We have the luxury of having warm nights so that uh, we have additional beds so that people are not out in the elements. Uh, we had a family of five last night that had we not opened a secondary location would have been sleeping in a car yet again. And I don't know about you, but I remember it being pretty cold last night. Area churches are open for homeless residents who are provided blankets, bed linens, hygiene packets, and a warm meal. Community Crisis Services offers simple advice to people outside in the elements. Call us, call us, call us. It's very, very easy to, to succumb to hypothermia, and you won't even notice it coming. So pick up the phone and call us, and we'll try and figure out a way to help. In addition to providing a warm place to stay, Community Crisis Services also provides crisis intervention assistance for issues ranging from domestic violence to suicide. From Hyattsville, Maryland, I'm Janine Samuels for CTV News. To reach Community Crisis Services for assistance, call 888-731-0999. Meantime, with temperatures in the mid-20s this morning, commuters felt a brisk touch of winter-like weather on their way to work. Some tell CTV they love the cold, while others say they wish they were in some place a little bit warmer. Well, so actually we're here from North Carolina for a conference, um, and so I've been driving from uh, my dad, my family's house, and um, this has been ridiculous. I don't know why we came here rather than south. <laughs> um, but at least it's sunny today. I am grateful for the sun. And it doesn't bother me. Plus, I've been working outside for the last 40 years, so it doesn't bother me at all. All right. And do you Don't worry, though. The frigid weather isn't expected to last long. Local forecasts show temperatures rising back up into the mid-50s by Sunday. The Sutton High School student who was beaten in a school hallway Friday is recovering from an operation. 16-year-old Draquan Yates underwent five hours of surgery Monday, according to WUSA 9. The mother of one of the students involved says Yates stepped in to protect her daughter. She also says her daughter has had problems with one of the students all year long and even reported it, but nothing was done. Yesterday, the principal sent a letter to parents stating that several students are already facing consequences and that there's an ongoing investigation. The state's attorney's office is reviewing the case. To date, no charges have been filed. In meantime, Suitland High students tell CTV that they are still shaken up after that altercation. We spoke with some of the victim peer, victims' peers this afternoon. Some say they think the school should have done a better job to protect the teenagers. Others are defending administrators, saying the staff did everything it could. I feel as though most of the fights that happen here in Suitland, they're, they're, they're petty. But uh, I felt as though it was... It was needed, but that at the same time it wasn't. They could have handled it some other type of way. And no, I don't feel safe because if it was something petty, you know, if something serious actually does happen, what are they going to do? It's the first time something like this happened, but I feel safe in the school. I wasn't actually in school Friday, but to hear about it, it was shocking. But to me, I personally don't feel like stuff like that happens on a regular basis. And students tell us that this is the second fight at Suitland High School this year. County Executive Rashern Baker has released a statement following the death of Martin Salia, the New Carrollton doctor who contracted Ebola while treating patients in his homeland of Sierra Leone. Baker says, quote, we are saddened by the death of Dr. Martin Salia and our thoughts go out to his family, friends and colleagues. Like many Prince Georgians, this family epitomizes the value of global humanity and dedication to improving the lives of the less fortunate and most vulnerable, end quote. 
Dr. Salia passed away yesterday morning at Nebraska Medical Center. He is the second Ebola death in the United States.